So have fun. Yeah, yeah. More twins. Yeah. Are you? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. We are. You both play across? Uh, yeah. That was mine. It's really just getting popular right here. <coughs> um, I, I guess I'll start. Uh, yeah, I think you should start. Yeah, I'm Richard Berge. I actually, uh, you know, a lot of people call me Dick, and for various reasons, but that's my nickname. And I actually grew up with that, and I went through a period probably when I was your age where I didn't want to be called that. But now I've reclaimed it. Very happy. Um, so you can call me whatever, the spring, Dick, Richard, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Um, gosh, I was about, I, I, are you, what grade are you guys in? Freshman, you, freshman, sophomore. freshman, sophomore. So I was about a junior when I um, had this sort of voice that said you're going to be an actor. And it was this kind of real clear voice. And I didn't know what to do with it, but I kind of put it away because I thought I wanted to be a professional football player or... I thought I wanted to be in the Secret Service or something, you know, that was exciting that I kind of saw on television or in movies or, you know, I could carry a gun and get whisked around in, you know, shiny cars. But uh, I, I took a kind of a circuitous route. You guys know what that word means? It's a long way around to what I'm doing, and I started making a living at what I'm doing, which is a professional actor when I was at age 28. So I know a lot of you guys probably watch a lot of TV or movies and you read all the magazines and I imagine your perception of what I do is really glamorous. Uh, but, and sometimes it is and it's a lot of fun but it's a job like any other job and it's fraught with ups and downs and uncertainties. Um, and like anything for me in life, if you have a passion about it, irrespective of what it is, because you can be passionate about marine biology or earth sciences, chemistry, you can be passionate about engineering. And I think that that's really, you know, maybe the lead motive of what I want to share with you today is whether it's what I do, which looks glamorous, or getting on American Idol, or anything you guys see in the media that looks glamorous. If that's a passion of yours to pursue it, I will do my best to help facilitate that, but um, I, I'm more interested in helping people with their passion in life. So uh, this happens to be my passion, but I have a lot of other passions. And um, I'm open to some questions, I guess. I'm, I don't know how much time we have. Till 1 o'clock. Till 1 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I'm not from here. I grew up... Uh, in New Jersey, so I had a different experience that you guys did. I know some of us are, are, are from another country, and I, I think that's a really wonderful thing to to do. I know that there's a possibility in your future of gap years, of travel, uh, going to school in other parts of the world, and I think understanding other cultures, getting out there and working, whether it's in the summer, whether it's after school, it helps broaden your perspective on life and gives you a sense of what real life is about. Because you guys are having a good time right now. It must be annoying sometimes to go to school, but this is the easiest time of your life. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to anybody's questions if you have it. I think we have a lot of questions, don't you? Raise your hand. How do you know like how a lot of like agencies or whatever are like total scams? So like how do you get started? Because I remember when I was like little, like my mom was like, oh, we're like too long to do like commercials and stuff. But then I like ended up being like this whole thing. They're like, oh, we need like thousands of dollars. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, if you have to pay someone for that, stay with. There are a few uh, agencies that are, are really conscious about working with younger talent. Um, you kind of have to know the sort of parameters, and one of them is, is to stay away from those that want upfront money. Um, what they might want is uh, to put you with someone who's going to take some pictures, or put you on tape, to, so they can submit to the gap, or 
uh, Desperate Housewives for a TV show, you know, so that there might be a character or something, or a commercial, if that's what you're asking about. But yeah, um, usually in order to do this kind of thing, you need some pictures, real of some sort, you know, with you in a scene. Are you in theater? So it, it sometimes it helps. Most casting directors don't want that, but you know if you can have a little slice of <clears throat> maybe yourself in a theater production, or even just doing some funny anecdotal scene with somebody or by yourself, or telling a joke just on a little snippet so that a casting director can see you or an agent can see what you look like and how you present yourself, that sort of thing. But typically, if they're asking you uh, for money, it's a scam. Um, you said you started when you were 28, so like, how long after that did it take you like, to get the money? Well, I was supporting myself, you know, I didn't, I, I when I was uh, a senior in high school, my dad, well, he started getting sick when he was, uh, when I was a sophomore, so he passed away in my first year of college, and uh, so I dropped out, and uh, I started working, various jobs. And um, I circled back to this, I can tell you the long version, but I circled back to this inner voice that said, all right, what am I going to do? So I started studying acting at Carnegie Hall in some various, in New York City, you don't have to be in college, essentially. You can get a job as a waiter, and I didn't do that. I have no, I'm going to get that waiter. So I didn't do that, I did something else. Um, and I studied with various teachers in New York for several years. And because I, one of the things I was doing was construction. I was working for a woman who cut hair, and I was installing something in her house or doing something. And she said, you know, I want, you, I want to introduce you to one of my clients who's a manager. And um, we met, I was doing a little play, one thing led to another. Uh, and that was my inroad in, and it took maybe about a year or two after working with her to get my first job. And from there, I met, I met my agent, and then I started going on auditions. But from when I really started to buckle down, um, it was about three years, about as long as it would take to go through, three or four years to go through the school, right, something like that. But yeah, so it. I was out on auditions and, you know, in my business, any actor will tell you, whether it's George Clooney or, you know, George Lopez, will tell you that they get more rejection than they get acceptance. It's, it's a, it's a, and if you model or do anything in the arts, whether you're a musician or a painter, um, you get rejected more than you get accepted. So, it requires an inner... Uh, mechanism of some perseverance and uh, what I like to call self-talk because you guys are constantly in competition with one another and comparing yourselves with you know other people and and that's such a difficult thing to do in life and what I would love to teach people younger because I got it when I was older is to Get a self-talk that is nurturing, that is kind to yourself, that then reaches out to others and practices kindness with other people. So, um, because I, I went through so much, you know, failure, it took a while in order for me to get my first steady job, which was, you know, an amazing feeling to be able to make my living at in an art. It's something that's very uh, tenuous. You know what that would Tenuous means it's. Not really stable. Not strong. So. Yeah, it took me a couple of years. And I still, I don't, uh, you know, I, I have to fight for jobs. I face rejection all the time still. Uh, I just don't take it personally. I love going in auditions and I'm so much more used to hearing no than yes. But uh, the times that I do get yes, it's, it's rewarding, but it doesn't make me feel more worthy. It depends. I, I, I think uh, 
all, all of that, you know, has every aspect of acting, whether it's comedy or drama, um, has, uh, whether it's stage or film. Uh, and there's a, a sort of a, a, a more mixed blend called dramedy. Um, I like it all. I like to explore it all. Um, I, I like to explore aspects of myself or, you know, my human condition that is dark, light, funny, not so funny. Um, that's a good question. It's, yeah, that is, and I think that is what is what I was talking about earlier, to explore life, to appreciate and experience as many people and conditions and environments and circumstances as possible. Uh, so many kids get into this field without really living life, without having a job or had responsibilities, whether it's working in a hospital, you know, as a volunteer, or, you know, flipping burgers at in and out doing something where you are interacting with other people, and, and that the biggest thing in life for me is developing a sense of humor. Because I know when you know, all of you guys have gotten angry, all of you guys have gotten you know, upset about something, and usually a sense of humor about whatever it is will help. Uh, tips for memorizing script. Here's tips on. for memorizing scripts? Yeah. Um, practice, practice, practice. Doing it, just doing it. Yeah. In front of the mirror. Uh, that helps, yeah. Yeah, doing it in front of the mirror. You know, we all learn, and uh, some of us learn kinesthetically, some of us learn auditorially, some of us learn visually. And I, I think a combination of uh, reading something and then listening to it, put it down on a, you know, if you're working on a script for a play or something, record it on an iPhone or a I used to have an old cassette tape recorder, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and listen to it. And then, you know, when you're working on something, if you are, if you have siblings or friends, it's good to, to go back and forth. Like that. I actually, I don't know if we have time, but I brought some material that I thought would be fun. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get, I'll get it, we'll get around to it. Uh, uh, how many times do you practicing on set? Uh, practicing on set? Yeah. You know, um, that's a great question because usually uh, people don't understand how much work that goes into it. And so a lot of people come to work, you know, from having stayed up the night before and rehearsing it or getting up early and, and rehearsing it. But throughout the course of the day when you're working, uh, sometimes you don't have a lot of, uh, of, of time to do that. Because uh, if you're starting early, you need to rehearse it a couple times and even while you're what's called blocking. Like the three of us are going to do a scene and then we come in and figure out and the director is showing us where they want us and then we are able to go while well, everybody's setting up lights and sound and we'll, we're able to go out and run it and practice it. Uh, would you have more chances Being bilingual is really important, I think. And trilingual. Um, are you bilingual? Which is an amazing thing. Yeah, a friend of mine actually works a lot, and it's very helpful to be able to cross over. Um, and there's this funny sort of reverse prejudice where in England, um, an, uh, uh, like English people can come over here and work. And there's a, a fair amount of English people who are on television or do movies, and they sound American. But an American can't go over and, and you know use an English accent. And, you know, it's it's very strange reverse. Except you know what 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 um, uh, Jennifer uh, no uh, Amy uh, Amy Adams who was the one in um, American House. Right, she did the English accent, but it's an American movie. You see, so a lot it's it's a it's a funny thing. But if you speak Spanish, there's a whole market that is rich in, in, in South America, Mexico, Spain, India has an amazing film industry, bigger than Hollywood. So in France, there's great movies, uh, and, uh, great theater. Uh, so yeah, being bilingual is a real thing. Do you still keep in touch with the past of those Um, Some of them, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and I, there's a couple things I have to get back in touch with them, you know, for, but uh, not, not really. You're kind of. I, you know, I, I know a lot of the crew, and so the, you know, the actors, actors and actresses, we, we kind of, we'll see each other again, and, but I, yeah, I, I, I do and I don't. Uh, who's your favorite actor to work with on the Spring Hall Sauce? Actor or actress? Or either one. Um, well, I, 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 I really liked working with Terry Hatcher. We worked a long time together. And um, she was a lot of fun. And I loved working with Marsha as well. Um, And I had fun with uh, Eva's very sweet. We didn't work a lot together, but she's just a really sweet person and, and fun. Who's your favorite? Um, I don't know. I'll probably say you or uh, whoever Nicolette's husband was on the show. The Nicolette's husband? Yeah, like in the fifth season or whatever it was. Blake or something like that. I don't. I don't remember. He was what? His name was Blake or something like that, and this is in some new movie, I forget, but... I don't know. Um, I didn't have a lot of scenes with the guys, a lot of scenes. Uh, Ricardo I really liked a lot. We went out a couple times, and we had a lot of fun outside of work. And I just saw him at an audition. Uh, he's, he's a lot of fun. He's a good guy. What was your favorite movie or TV show that you acted in? Um, well, I really liked Desperate Housewives a lot. And I loved working on, I had a TV series called The Sentinel, which was a really fun TV show. And I liked working on 24 a lot. That was a lot of fun. I had, I had, you know, I, 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 each one is sort of my favorite when I do it. Um, uh, I was just over in Hawaii working on, show, uh, on Hawaii Five O, and it was a lot of fun because I was in Hawaii. <laughs> I didn't, you know, when I was on this show called The Set, I was the set, so it was a lot of work and a lot of special. Working on Desperate Housewives, I could come and call Desperate Housewives. I was, you know, I'd come and have fun and do my thing, and, um, and that was a lot of fun because. You know, it was a comedy, and it was, but yet it had had dramatic moments to it. You know, it was it, it, a lot to play, with, and a lot of fun. And we goofed around. Um, for like some of the episodes in like Desperate Housewives, like the last one, where like all of the people who died throughout the whole season, um, you know how they all show up again. Did you film that like in order? Or would you film it like earlier? Because some people like change how they look. No, it was all filmed after the show. Yeah, it was all filmed. Uh, that's a good question. But, you know, typically when you film a show, everything is shot out of sequence. And uh, that sort of thing, yeah, time went by. People were brought back. And, uh, it was all filmed after. Yeah. I never saw it, but I, I would imagine I, they might have taken some earlier footage of people. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. Desperate Housewives? Favorite episode? I don't know. Terry and I were able to do a lot of physical comedy. Uh, so there was something. I don't, I don't even remember. We did I so many. We did a lot. So I, 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 uh, the last episode where everybody dies. There was a character who played the pharmacist, who I did a movie with. I don't know if you guys are ever watching horror movies, but I, I did a movie with George. George. Is that his name? Yeah. <laughs> well, we did a movie, a horror movie together, and, and um, it was a really popular horror movie. But we, all we did was laugh. But we were super serious when the camera rolled. We were act, you know, really doing our job. But because you know we're we were professionals and we just laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed and, laughed and that's what we did.